Every one of these deer are retrieved and every one of them had a story. But you gotta be prepared. You need to have a watch so you know how long to wait. You need to have a compass so you know which direction you're going and where the deer went. A Coleman lantern works really well at night because if you shoot it at nighttime or in the evening, that Coleman lantern, if you get one of those with the propane in it, that it'll actually make that blood almost glow. And it's really good to help a neat light. You want to have a camera with you for, you know, when your blood trailers, when you get there, you can take these kind of photos if you want to. You know, so what happened? You want a GPS, you can keep a GPS. Now, if you've got a GPS and you're really, really good with that, you can grid the area that you, you can say, oh, you got the little man, the little man will show you that already walked here. And you say, well, I already walked there, I didn't find a deer, so I'm going to go someplace where the little man didn't walk. So you go over and walk that grid. It works really well with one of those uh, GPSs today. You can actually check, and you know, it'll document where you checked and where you actually walked. If you didn't walk there, it's not going to show you walked there. So if you didn't find a deer in that area, just move over another quadrant on your GPS and go search that one out. You need some, at least some toilet paper. Toilet paper is really nice, and the nice thing about toilet paper is it's biodegradable if you don't pick it up. You know, nature will take care of it. If you use the flagging tape, that's really visible, but make sure you take it down, you know. And what you're doing is you're trying to get a course of where that deer went. So if you do lose the blood, you can turn around and you can visual that, that trail. And you need to do that on about every deer so you can gain experience. Here again, your weatherman radio comes into play. Now, if you've got a questionable deer, you, you go back to your truck, get your thoughts to you, turn the weather radio on. Naturally, if you've got rain in the forecast, you may have to go search for it now if it's going to wash it out, you know. So, but with the weather, if it says it's going to be clear and cold that night, you just go home and, you know, hope for the best. But without a weather radio, you don't know what the weather fronts are going to come in. Naturally, you have the game tracker. We went through that last night. That's really good for some of you guys just starting out. Aluminox are really good. For you guys that are shooting those high fast bows, that gives you visibility to where you know where the, where the deer got hit, you know, and it really is a plus because you can't tell where it got hit. But keep in mind, you got to be honest, you got to be ethical. If you shoot a 130 inch deer or a 200 inch deer, it ain't going to be Pope and Young eligible. And you got to know that going into it. And, uh, you know, it was killed with a bow and arrow, but the way they got their uh, bylaws in their fair chase affidavit. If you shot it with Illuminoc, it would, you know, it wouldn't be subject to be entered in the Pope and Young record book. Don't they, do they have a let-off rule too then on the bow for Pope and Young? Yeah, but it's, it's it, you can go up to eighty percent now. You know, they bumped it up to there. So most bows are in that category, and it doesn't. But this is usually what gets them. It's Illuminoc, and I, I've turned down a few deer. I have to ask the gentleman on the telephone. You know, they're all excited. He's telling me about the hunt. I asked him if they, uh, you by chance didn't use Luminox. Yeah. Well, I can score it for Iowa, but I can't put it in a and Young. So we, that's just one of their rules about it. Uh, these little lights came out a few years ago. Some blood lights, I don't know. Uh, they sort of work. See, you, you, see that little light thing? That sort of supposed to illuminate the blood and make it red, but I think 128 ounces of deer blood. Because that's what we're going to track, is the deer blood. What size of deer in weight does this much blood represent? 128 ounces of blood. How big a deer is that in pounds? Anybody? The 128 ounces of blood. How big would that deer be? Deer-sized animals, for every pound of live weight, has one ounce of blood. So therefore, that would be your 128-pound dove, is what we have right here. For one pound of body weight, you got one ounce of blood. 128 pounds of deer, 128 pounds of, or 128 ounces of blood. That's what you have. Now, with that said, and we're talking about blood trailing. Let me move this stuff up. How much blood does this deer got to lose 
How many of these glasses do I got to fill up? Before it Yeah, before it succumbs to death. There's 16 ounces. We're on the third one. How many, how many more do I got to fill up? Two, four of them. I'd say at least five. Do I fill four up? Do I fill five up? Do I fill six up? There's 16 ounces. Three. How many? Three. Three. Josh says three. Is Josh right or should I go? What do you think? Up or down? Up. <laughs> go up? How much more? I'd say at least five. Five? Do I fill up five? Okay, he says five. Whoa, there's a little bit on the, on the fourth floor. <laughs> okay. And you're from the Minnesota, the Uper. You would be a Uper, wouldn't you? No, not that ugly. <laughs> you're a Viking. All right. We're not that desperate. We got it. <laughs> Josh, Josh, if, if we take it at five, five times 16 is what? Five times it's six is, uh, is uh, 30. And carry it, that'd be 80. That'd be 80 ounces of blood. Or do we take uh, three times sixteen, which would be uh, what forty-eight? We need about a third of what you got there. That's one hundred twenty-eight ounces, and you're right. We need a third, so it, it would be about forty-two. About, it would be three glasses is what we have to take out of that beer circulatory system. A third. Once you lose a third of its blood. Now, that doesn't mean all the blood's going to be on the forest floor like it is on that table. <laughs> it could still be in the thoracic cavity and not get to the ground. But it has to, to in order for that deer to succumb to death, out of 128 ounces, it'll have to lose at least 42. And in this case, it lost 48 by three glasses, 16 ounces. So once you take a third, lose a third, it's going to not be able to oxygenate the brain, the brain's going to shut it off and it's going to succumb to death. All that blood may not be on the ground. It still could be in the animal. It could be a real skimpy blood trail, what I'm saying. If the arrow didn't come out, you know that, that broadside hole that I was talking about? That's where it really comes into play. That deer can run so fast, that blood doesn't get to the ground, but it's out of the circulatory system, but you don't find that much blood on the ground when you blood trail, because it's still in the deer. You'll find it all in the deer. Okay, go out here. You go. You missed out. We all took a turn. No, average. You guys got to think about the average year and a half old buck. That's got a rack about this size, weighing 125 pounds. What do you think? Something that's got these size racks on its waist. You get up into a 200, 250, 275 pound deer. That deer's got to still lose that third of that blood supply. That's a lot more blood. That's how come those Becker bucks can go for it. Yeah, you, you, most guys say, why is it when I shoot those little ones, they just pile up? And man, I shoot them big ones, and I'll be damned. I, that's because a 300 pound buck is going to have to have 100 ounces of blood on the ground. They've got more blood to work with, they're going to go farther before they succumb to death. Where the little ones crash and burn pretty quick. But uh, I need to get a paper towel. I'll get you one here. I'll get you some. Uh, uh, anyhow, for every pound of body weight in deer sized animals, now when they get up to moose, that decreases a little bit. And, you know, elk, it, it's not quite the same formula. But for deer sized animals like bear and deer, animal, one pound is one ounce of blood. How many ounces do they have to lose out of that circulatory system before they die? A third. Okay. 300 pounds, 100, 100 ounces. Just keep that in mind. That's why some of that blood goes. Anybody want some of this blood? Pretty good blood. It does. I hate to just throw it away. You know, vampires. <laughs> but anyhow, that job. And that, that's why a lot of people can't find those big bucks. Because they go a lot farther and they got a lot more blood in them.